Hi and welcome to your explanation on the instant box camera. I assume you purchased one of the assembly kits and you made it, assembled your beautiful piece. I hope you chose a fine color or like this, chose the natural finish with just a bit of varnish. All right, let's get started. It's really not difficult. It just takes a bit of practice in getting to know the pieces, even if you've never used box cameras before or analog photography or printed in a darkroom. Let's start. I assume you attached your lens to the front. You just screwed it in. This is a 135 millimeter lens. So we usually have our object hmm, maybe two to three meters away from us, depending how large, of course, the object is. The lens is a 4.5 to 16 aperture lens. That means you can open and close the aperture from 4.5. So that's a large opening to 16. That's a small opening. 4.5 we would use if we have uh, less light available. And if you want the background blurry, 16, so the hole is smaller, we would use if there's a lot of light available and we want the more as possible sharp. With box cameras, focusing is not so easy. So I usually tend to go between 5.6 and aperture 8. Those are sort of my numbers that work the best for me. The lens has no shutter. That is on your analog camera or digital camera, when you press the button, the opening and closing and for how long basically we open and close the shutter. That's the key question. So on this lens, the shutter is the lens cap. We will measure with a measuring tool. I have two options here. We will measure either with just sort of an, an old school direct measuring tool where I measure how I photograph. So the object I photograph, I will measure the light that hits the object or I have a digital version on my phone, yeah, a measuring tool from an application that costs very little money and is quite accurate. What you do here is you set the aperture and then you set your ISO. That's the light sensitivity of the paper. We will go more detailed into this situation and this sort of subject on the ISO video. So let's say I want to take a picture. The ISO of the paper I'm using with the filter all of this I will explain later on, is 3. So in my setting I chose ISO 3, aperture I'm going to use 8, and the time is what the measuring tool will calculate for me. So if I focus here on my subject it says 1 second. That means I have to lift the lens cap for 1 second. I do that with a timer, usually I have my timer and it goes one close. So that's the shutter on a camera like this. You can also attach your large format lens if you are maybe more advanced and you have your own large format camera, which I do too. This is from an old Kodak camera and I set it onto this adapter which we can provide for you if you prefer to use your own lens. No problem. All right, let's put these away for now. Next on our camera, we have the sleeve, which you have attached on the inside with a rubber band. That is so that we can take it away and wash it, because once in a while we get chemicals on our sleeve and it's better that it's removable. Or maybe you also want to add your own sleeve with your own funky colors. The sleeve is here so that we can enter the box without light entering the box, because that's really important as we have to create a darkroom environment. So everything has to be closed when you deal with paper inside. The lens is closed, the back door is closed, everything is light tight. So through the sleeve, I enter the camera and I can access the paper box where our darkroom paper is. Again, we'll have a separate video on the different types of papers and the different type of papers we can use with the camera. So what I do, step by step, I open the lens at first, I go to the widest aperture. Then, I just move to the camera, but usually I keep the camera set in one position towards the subject I'm photographing. I'm just rotating it so you can better see what I'm doing. Now, I'll open the back door. And I look through. And by moving my pole, I will start to have a sharp image. And here it is. If the light is very strong, the sun is strong, maybe use an extra cloth to cover your head, it will make it easier for you to focus. 
All right, so I'm focusing here. In focus. We use the provided clip. Clip it. So we've marked the focusing position. I'm going to close here. Pull back. Close my shutter. And now I'm going to enter. Push this back so I have space inside. Now I'll take a paper from the paper box because everything is closed so I can open my paper box. I take the photo paper out and place it in the paper holder. So I'm lifting it, pulling it down, putting the paper in and closing it. Now the camera is loaded and ready to be exposed. I go back into the focus mode. Remember we marked it here. So it's in focus. I set it to one second before. So I'm taking my measuring tool and I go one close. So that was an exposure of one second. That is what I measured before. Now I go back in my sleeve. I'll take the paper from the paper holder take it and put it into the first tray. Usually what I do, I have two trays here. I place on the right tray, the developer, and on the left tray, the fixer. So right now I'm putting it into the developer and I'm agitating the tray slightly so that all the developer is really touching the paper. Once the developing is done, which with my, with my developer is 60 seconds, it will be indicated on your developing chemicals. Once the 60 seconds are done, I'm taking the paper, I'm letting it rinse off a little bit, and now I'm taking it and putting it into the fixing tray. I'm gonna do the same thing, just agitating it a bit, moving the tray, not too much, because I don't wanna have any spilled chemicals. And now I'm going to open the back door and uh, check inside my fixing tray and see if something is there. As this was just a test, I didn't really take a photo, I used a blank paper. So usually now we'll have a negative. That negative is obviously not the finished photograph we want. What we want is a positive. So for that, we take the picture and we put it on the negative holder. When you take the picture out of the fixer, we wash it for a little bit before. That is good to rinse off the chemicals. We have to do that in any case. When your paper is wet, it will stick very well on the wood. You can also use a rubber band, for example, to tighten up the paper and really make it attach well. So we take our negative, we place it in front here at the negative holder, put it in. That's usually stable enough, but we do have an extra screw for support. Once you have your negative on the negative holder, we do the same thing. You measure the light on the negative with your application or your light meter. You set the aperture according. I actually take a higher aperture number, let's say eight or 11, when I take the photograph of the negative to really make sure it is in focus. All right, first I'm gonna open up the aperture to 4.5 so I really see the clearly the picture. So we set the focus. Once in focus, I mark it again with my clip and we do exactly the same thing. Make sure everything is closed, closed. I measure the light. I assume it will be two seconds now. I say this from experience, but I always remeasure. We go back into the inside, take a paper, put the paper onto our paper holder. Once it's loaded, make sure you're in focus here. And we expose, one, two, closed. And you do the same thing. You take the paper, you put it into the developer, you put it into the fixer. After the according time, you take it out and you will have your positive. So that's sort of the simple, quick process on how to take a photograph with the box camera. If you're experienced, you'll have that done in probably three minutes, the negative, 
and another three minutes the positive.